Thank you and welcome uh, on this very special occasion, this very special evening. In 1911, Houston was 75 years old, and it had a lot going for it. It had an economy based on oil and agriculture. It was a prosperous regional hub. It had a population of 80,000 people and growing rapidly. At the same time, Austin, San Antonio, even tiny College Station had universities, and Houston had none. But that was all about to change thanks to the generosity of a transplanted New Englander by the name of William Marsh Rice. It is now my pleasure to introduce David Liebron, the seventh president of Rice University, and who in every respect is a worthy successor of Edgar O'Dell Lovett. David? Many things amaze me about the founding of our university. Lovett was emphatic that the new university would be intimately connected with the city of Houston. Concern about the needs of the city of Houston were also to have a profound effect on how the university developed with emphasis at the beginning on science and technology. The immediate needs of Houston at the time helped determine the original curriculum. As the city matured, so did its great university. As I like to put it, it is gratifying that after almost 100 years, all of Harris County and the city of Houston is under rice control. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming our graduate, Ed Emmett. Thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, I might quibble over the term control. If you think back about it, you know, Harris County, city of Houston, we're, we're now 50 times the size of what we were 100 years ago. And I can tell you as someone who grew up for the most part in the East Texas oil field and came here on a Teagle Foundation scholarship. Uh, I would not be who I am without Rice University. There's no question about that. I know as we stand here and celebrate the 100 year anniversary of the laying of the cornerstone, all of us really wanna know what's it gonna be 100 years from now. And we know that it's still going to be family, it's still going to be a tremendous resource, and it will be even better known. Maranise Parker, unfortunately, couldn't be here tonight due to a conflict in her schedule. New Rice students enter through Lovett Hall Sally Port at matriculation, and New Rice graduates exit the same portal at graduation. They enter Rice smart and eager to learn. They depart wiser and ready to lead. While they are here as students, and in many cases, after they graduate, they enrich the fabric of our great city. And for that, I celebrate Rice. Happy 100th birthday, Lovett Hall. May your second century be as meaningful as your first. And last in our tributes, I've been asked to read a letter from a former, if brief, Rice faculty member who also could not be here with us this evening. Barbara and I send our warmest wishes to all those gathered on Founders Court to celebrate Rice and the centennial of Lovett Hall. The cornerstone of Lovett Hall became the foundation for higher education in Houston, and thus an essential building block for the steady improvements in reputation and prosperity that our region has enjoyed in the past 100 years. As Houstonians, as Texans, and as Americans, I believe we all have reasons to be grateful for the legacy of Rice's founder, William Marsh Rice, and its founding president, Edgar Odell Lovett, and to celebrate Rice. With best wishes for a wonderful event, George Bush. This is the Sally Port, the vaulted passage through which for nearly half a century Thousands of students have entered into university life. 
To plan the campus and design the first buildings, Lovett and the trustees selected a distinguished architect, Ralph Adams Cram of Boston. At first challenged by the flat, almost treeless track of land that was to be the campus, Cram soon created a new style of architecture, combining a variety of Mediterranean motifs and buildings set in a series of academic quadrangles. From the very beginning, the university projected a sense of physical beauty that embodied its high ambitions. So after several years of careful planning, on March 2nd, 1911, the 75th anniversary of the Texas Declaration of Independence, the cornerstone for the Rice Institute Administration Building was laid, and the new university officially put down roots in Texas soil. Julian Huxley wrote to his countrymen in England, trying to explain the astounding fact of a great new university housed in magnificent buildings far away on the Texas frontier. We were confronted by an extraordinary spectacle. The administration building was before us, looking almost as if it had risen miraculously out of the earth. It seemed as new and real as a new species of bird of paradise lit on in a New Guinea jungle. Here it stood, brilliant, astounding, enduring. Folks, the mob and I would like to ha ask you for help. We have these dignitaries from the city, the county, and the university, but we would like you to help us celebrate rice by singing Happy Birthday to Love at Hall. And we would be very disappointed should you refuse to help us. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Love at Hall. Happy birthday to Well done. Now it's time, folks. Come on and join us and let us eat cake. Yeah. Oh, cake.